And we're live. It's time for another huge debate on full-time devils. But today, there's only one place we can start because we are finally back on Twitter. And it's all thanks to you guys. You kept getting the hashtag. Oh, my God, Chris. I didn't expect that. Uh, you kept the hashtag free FTD going. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. We all really appreciate it. We're back. And we're close to 200,000 followers as well, which is brilliant news. <laughs> Finally, uh, we can't even celebrate actually, to be honest, because there's still one person on the call uh, today who is actually still currently in Twitter jail, Doc Joshy. Uh, so keep that hashtag going, hashtag free Doc Joshy, although he's probably more justified to be in there than us. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. You voted for this week's topic, so if you don't like it, it's your own fault, but I do think you are going to be like it. It's going to be quite fun, this one. Take it half serious, because let's face it, none of us can actually predict the future, can we? However, what I have done uh, ahead of today's debate, where we're going to be debating what Manchester United are going to be like in the year 2023? What's it going to be like in five years? What I have done is uh, I've used the latest in age rendering technology and I've got a roughly 99% accurate representation coming up on the screen now just for the viewers at home of what we're all going to look like in 2023. So have a look at that. I mean, I think we all look quite good there. I think Paul's got off the, 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 the nicest there. Uh, <laughs> Doc Joshy looks a bit like he's had a spice addiction for about a decade. And Halston, mate, you look like Alan Brazil. What else can I say? Uh, right, let's move on. Uh, and let's talk about how United are going to be in 2023, starting with the manager. I think it would be a really hey, bold that's gonna it's going to be a brutal five years looking at them photos. <laughs> uh, it's going to be it's going to be a real bold call if anyone says that Jose Mourinho is still going to be Man United manager in five years' time. But we'll wait and see. Uh, Halson, what are you saying? Who's going to be leading us to glory? Do I want to say? I'm going to throw a name that's not been spoken about in the in, in the arena, um, and I'm going to go with Leonardo Jardim. I have no idea who that is. Please elaborate. <laughs> I, know you, I know you wouldn't have any idea. It's the Monaco manager, Gary. Right, okay. Uh, Paul, are you going to talk about someone that I actually know? Yeah, you've heard of this guy. Um, he's a man that goes by the name of Nicky Butts. Um, this Ooh. is... This is uh, I, was, I was thinking about the future of Manchester United and, and what it could look like. And this is a combination of hope and expectation, this, this shout, because... This is the direction I would love to see the club going in. Uh, with all of my picks today, players and staff alike, they're representative of ideas rather than individuals. So because we can't see the future, the, the idea that we could go with a homegrown manager, united through and through, um, brought through the club system, he'll have had five years um, of developing the academy, learning all the kind of managerial stuff that goes with that managerial in the more traditional sense, you know, as in managing staff and uh, juggling multiple demands and all that kind of stuff. All the while, you know, picking up more and more tactical insight and now, and then he'll be ready to take the big job and we'll have, uh, you know, uh, one of our own managing the club and not just go from either kind of hipster young European manager or established superstar manager on this kind of three year cycle. Nice one, Paul Rankast. Doc Josh, uh, Paul's just spoken about having one of our own as our manager. Uh, another name out there, currently managing Wales, Ryan Giggs. Where do you reckon he'll be in five years? Potential to take over United? Well, um, I don't know. We'll see how he gets on. But I, I kind of, I do like that idea. And, you know, I found it really difficult to, when I was looking around current managers, and obviously five years is a long time, look at United, look at two years ago, what the team looked like and, and whatnot. So, you know, I was thinking about who are the personalities around and, and there isn't really anyone that stand out as a youngster because, again, difficult to predict. And I actually went with Nicky Butt as well, um, ah. weirdly. Um, so I, I thought, you know, Jose Mourinho, he's here here, and, and he's spoken highly of the academy. The academy is doing really well. Nicky Butt speaks very well. He's obviously um, turned things around in the academy or under 23 is not so much, but he's also spoken around that um, that age level. And if he goes on doing well, I was just sort of thinking about the way in which sort of Barcelona with Pep Guardiola, um, Real Madrid with, with Zinedine Zidane, and potentially, I'm not saying, you know, it's a really difficult one to predict, but potentially this might be that kind of transition that you see as he sort of turns around the academy. And if it continues to go that way and some of these players start coming through into the first team and doing really well, then, and as Jose comes to the end of his tenure at United, it might be a... You know, it might be a really good transition from that point of view if there's no standout manager. You know, a lot of people talk about Pochettino, but I just don't think he's got it to get 
people that get teams just over the line. He's obviously an excellent manager, but I've not seen it yet, or well, nobody has. So, um, and then looking around, <clears throat> there are some really excellent young managers around, but it's just difficult to see whether what, to to work out whether that it, they're at a peak or whether they're just on the cusp of really going and and moving forward. You know, like people talked about Eddie Howe going to Arsenal previously, and now that's not really the chat. So. You're thinking about these. I'm not saying Eddie Howe would have been a United candidate, but I'm just saying think about the young managers out there. So, but I went with Nicky Butt. I think it'll be a really cool transition, um, and Gals, it would just I, be quite nice for I, the team. Can I respond to the two other guys on the debate here going for Nicky Butt? Oh, of course you can. That's the yeah. point. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting word in my ear that Nicky Butt's got a 23% win ratio with the under 23s, and he's got a 40% win ratio with the under-19s, which was one of the most talented sides that we've seen with Manchester United. Nicky Butt's doing a pretty good administration job, but as a coach, his tactics are more outdated than Jose Mourinho's. His approach with the team that he's got is awful. Nicky Butt is not a good manager. And the guy that I've gone for, and I didn't elaborate, I thought we were just literally I was going to let you elaborate, don't uh, worry. So, Tardim has won titles in Portugal, he's won titles in Greece, and he's won <clears> titles in France with Monaco against the might of PSG. This is a guy that brings through young players. You only know about who Kylian Mbappe is because of Jardim. This is a guy that brought through William Carvalho. This is a guy that's made Monaco one of the most exciting sides in world football. This is a young manager with the world at his feet. He's not a hipster manager. This is a guy that's going out there and proving it. Nicky Butt, with the tools that he's got at his disposal as Manchester United um, Academy Director, he's doing a brilliant <laughs> job administrationally where he's bringing in um, players and signing players for that team. But the people who are making that team win are Kieran McKenna, primarily for the under-18s. When Nicky Butt has been the coach, when Nicky Butt has been the manager, there's been some very questionable decisions with the starting eleven and the tactics. And and he won three games with the under-23s, with, with a team that on paper should not just be winning three games. And with the under-19s, that's a team that's just won the league at under-18s level with the um, injection of Terrell Warren, Roshan Williams and Angel Gomez. Eight games in twenty. It's not. It's not good enough. He's not a good coach. Right, I do so, want to, go, go on. Go on. Go on, Paul. Just, just one little thing. Just so we're not putting fake news out there. Jardim never won the league in Portugal. He won the second he division. Did. It's he a won... league. I said he won a league. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. My he won a, a he league, won... not the league. He also won the Greek league with Olympiacos, which is you know this, that's that's free money. <laughs> um, no, I mean I, I think it's a it's a salient point. But the the idea that in five years' time. Somebody like Nicky, like I said, my, my pick of Nicky Butt is representative rather than necessarily individual. It's about the direction that we should be travelling. And there's every chance that Nicky Butt could learn an awful lot in five years um, to become a better manager. Yeah. And Jardim, there's there's every chance he goes, I, I'm not saying this will happen, there's every chance he goes right off the boil. We've seen this season... I mean, it, it's a very difficult situation he's in, obviously, losing the kind of level of talent that he lost. But um, they've been absolutely hammered, both in terms of when they played PSG and in the league. I mean, it's not a fair competition, and he has done a bang-up job. He's a fine manager. Right, so and, this is my, right we're moving on. I think, I, think, I think we need to move on from the manager point but now, guys, because is... everyone has put together their teams, and I want to get through everyone's starting eleven, see who they think will be playing for United in five years' time. However, just one left field name to add in there. I think that five years is quite a bit too soon. However, Michael Carrick, keep your eyes mm. on that one. I uh, thought right, about Carrick, yeah. Goalkeeper in defence. Let's talk about that. Who will be playing between the sticks? And in the defence, in five years' time, we'd all love to say David De Gea, but personally, I can't see it. Paul, what do you reckon, mate? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, the dream would be that, that Big Dave stays with us for his entire career. And I don't think that's completely impossible, but we will have to get real good for that to happen. Yeah. At some point, he is going to surely get fed up with not winning the league because he's the calibre of goalkeeper that should Champions be winning the league every all, yeah. season. Yeah, exactly. I've gone with Joel Pereira, which, <clears> you know, <throat> I, I, I think maybe this is bold. United haven't brought through a youth team goalkeeper for a long time. There was the flirtation with Ben Foster, but that didn't really work. But if you look at the way the team's set up right now, you could almost see a transition from De Gea 1 and 2 to maybe Romero and Pereira 1 and 2. Um, and maybe Pereira outshines Romero over time. I mean, Mourinho is very high on him. Um, which is unusual for a young player. He is Portuguese, and Mourinho does, you know, have uh, a love of quality Portuguese players, understandably. Um, but I just, I just don't think it's the wildest shout to suggest that Joel Pereira should will be in goal in, in five years' time. 
Joshy, who would you have between the sticks and in the defence? <clears throat> well, I mean, look. Oh, are we doing the whole thing? But in in, in at, look in in net, um, I've I've gone a similar train of thought again with uh, with Paul actually because I don't think De Gea. I mean, we would all love him to stay, and I think if we get if we, we if we challenge for Champions Leagues and we challenge for the league, he will stay uh, for a long time. But five years, I think at some point he will want to go to Madrid, you know, his hometown, and maybe finish his career there. Um, I don't, although they're not really that type of a club, but you know, at some point, so he'll be 32 in five years' time. I think maybe around 30, he might be thinking it's his last move for a goal- goalkeeper, really at the top of the game. So he may move around then. And I think Joel Pereira might, it, <clears throat> hopefully, from what we've <clears throat> heard and what we've seen in the first team, you know, he may transition into that role. So that's what I actually picked Joel Pereira as well. My apologies, Paul. Did we forget to get your defence off you then? We'll go back to you in a second. Get that, okay. uh, Joshy. First, who are you going to play as your back? Four, I presume. Oh, so we do defence, yeah. Yeah, um, go on. Yeah, so look again. These names that I've put in, like Paul said, are more representative of the type of player I'm thinking of, as opposed to that specific player, because it is just really difficult. And I think, look, Ashley Young and Antonio Valencia, <laughs> if they're starting in five years' time, <laughs> <laughs> mate, Phil Jones <laughs> is still going to be at Manchester United in it's five a years' possibility, time. Possibility, right? But um, look, so I think. Very soon, we'll be signing a right back, and I don't think it'll be a super young right back. It'll be like a mid twenties right back who has still got that potential to improve. Who Jose will know. Hope, well, I think he'll know him fairly well, given he plays in Port. Uh, he plays in Portugal, uh, and he brings, and he's still got that level to go up. So I picked at right back um, Ricardo Pereira as the Porto right back, and he's on. The, he's been on our radar. He's been on other people's radars. And I don't think he's, he's that type of player. He's not, he's not ungettable. It's not like we're going to an elite club and trying to get their, one of their best players. He will cost a bit of money. And he's, he's still at that age where he's going to improve. And he could be in the side for a long time. The idea is that he represents that type of player as opposed to specifically him, but someone around that kind of profile. Left back, I think this is ob- an obvious area of concern. Um, here, I've gone for a slightly different profile of player, a young player who can be in the side and really develop and go long term. Um, given we've got like Rojo in, in the squad, he may go, he may not go, but we've got that kind of uh, backup. Ashley Young, again, we've got that kind of backup. Luke Shaw looks like he's on his way out. Um, so I've gone for, I was thinking about uh, Tierney at Celtic because he's been linked, he's young and he's, you know, he's, got, he's captaining that side. But I went with Ryan Sessegnon. Yes. Um, at left back, um, and and at that age, at that time he'll be uh, if I've got my maths right, 23 years old. So again, hopefully established in the side, as other, and, and knocking other people out as well. Uh, Centre backs, I think Eric Bay. Hopefully, um, if he doesn't um, get a load of injuries, which is probably the only concern around him, I think he'll be our long term centre back. And again, with centre back, I would be looking for a long term partnership. Um, but I don't think there's anyone at the club that at the moment looks like they're going to settle into that role um so i've gone for again at the other center back role uh, uh, someone who's uh again mid-20s can come in got good experience excellent quality um uh, and then form that partnership with um with bay in the long term for the for well in that mid-term really because five years about mid-term with the likes of tuan zebe as a backup um Fosu Mensa potentially as a backup. Um, so I've got, and then you've got the other squad members like Lindelof. So I've gone with I've gone with uh, Koulibaly from um, Napoli. I think he's a top class centre back. I'd love us to sign him. He's tw- he's 26 years old. You know, in five years' time, if he could, if we would sign him, say in the summer, he'd have five years alongside Eric Bay, a bit like that Vidic um, F- Ferdinand partnership. So yeah, that's my back four. Again, it might not be specifically him, but someone in that profile, mid mid twenties, coming up, excellent quality, and then you've got that backup area like Tuan Zebi and Fosamenza, that type. Can I just say I'm a massive fan of Joshi being the first one to get the phrase if I've got my maths right in there. We're adding <laughs> five here, guys. This man is a doctor. His job is to keep you alive. Right. Paul Rankast, talk to me about your defence since I rather rudely skipped past you before. I was so close to putting Phil Jones in the heart of my defense. Not even, not even joking. He it's was the funny. last name to funny. come off. No, I, I think Phil Jones is a. I, listen, I know this is not a popular view. I think Phil Jones is a very fine defender, and I think there is, um, 
at least a 30% chance that the next five years of his career will be better than the last five years of his career um, because we, we see this with central defenders. The, if the your mistakes, math is right. Yeah, the mistakes <laughs> leave their game. And now I think with Jones, the problem is is injuries. But anyway, um, I, for very similar reasons to Josh, I went with a currently established mid-20s right back in Jibril Sidibe, but it could be anyone. At, uh, at left back, I googled left back Wonder Kids football manager because their scouting network's way better than mine. <laughs> let's see, um, let's and picked, picked, well, I did then look through a list and That's be like... That's steroids, that, Paul. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, ben Chilwell uh, from Leicester, young up-and-coming left-back. But listen, just insert a n other young up-and-coming left-back from around the world here. Um, I, I really like Joshy shout there too. And in the middle, this is this is the dream. It's Baye and Twanzebe. That... that could be such an effective central defensive partnership. And really and truly, there's no reason why it shouldn't be. With Baye, it'll be about injuries. With Twanzebe, it'll be about um, how he makes the transition to long-term in one position in first-team football. But he's got all the tools, right? So, yeah, that's my back four. Nice to see Twanzebe in your teams, I've got to say, lads. But um, Fosu Menza getting missed in both of them. Halson, would you put him ah, in, yeah. in five years? Two. Too early, son. You've got your maths wrong there. You've gone too early. Ah, uh, is he going in the oh. midfield? Alson, go on then. You tell me. Using your defence. Uh, I've gone with my ages at the start of the season. So, no, Josh has just gone with five years on top of where they are now. But I've gone for, you know, oh, in yeah. five years' time at the start of the season. So, I've, you know, the age is We're, not arguing. We're not arguing how old people are in this. No, sport. that's fair enough. Um, um, Big Dave is in, the, in between the sticks for me. I think he's still going to be here. I think he's building a bit of a legacy now. And I think the opportunity for him to go was the last couple of windows. I still think there's a threat. But if Real Madrid sign another goalkeeper in the next two summer windows, that's probably going to be more of a long-term plan for them. Somebody that's going to probably stay and take the opportunity of them signing Big Dave away. Uh, I'm more hoping than thinking on that one. But uh, the, the Big Dave will be 31 at the start of the season in five years' time. So that, for me is a brilliant age room. I can't even imagine how good he's going to be Prime with an extra goalie. five years experience. Absolutely fantastic. So big David net for me. Fosu Mensah, right back. Don't really think that he should stay as a right back. I think he ultimately, I would love to see him in midfield. Positionally, he's still got a lot to learn as a central midfielder. So I'm just thinking opportunities are probably going to come his way with what's going on with Valencia and that, and that at United. I think opportunities will come his way as a right back and he'll probably end up staying as a right back. And I've got no problem with that. Because going forward and defensively, Fosu Mensah's mint. So uh, a, a bombing fullback, Fosu Mensa could make. Um, Bayer, obviously, I think all of us have gone with Bayer centre half. He's only going to be 28 at that time, right at his peak, world class centre half. Uh, and alongside him, I've got Tuan AB in my squad, absolutely. He'll be 24 at the time. But I've gone with Delic from Ajax because that is a, a cultured centre half, someone who can play out from the back, someone who's got a hell of a lot of experience. He'll be 22 at the time. He's 18 at the moment, first choice for Ajax. Absolutely smashing it! I think that's the sort of that's the sort of player that United end up going signing, really, isn't it? That sort of your know, second tier club like Ajax. We, that's a more realistic signing for us, and then we make them into a superstar. At left back, Ryan Sessignon would be my choice at left back, but I think in the next five years we're probably going to see him evolve into a proper winger and probably stay as a winger. He's very attacking. Uh, I think he should go to England uh, to the England squad for the World Cup this summer as a left back. But I think in five years' time, you're probably going to see him as a left midfielder or a left winger. And we have got an absolute cracker in the academy uh, who should have been in the nominations for the Academy Player of the Year, and that's Ethan Laird. Last season, uh, Ethan Laird was um, the leading goal scorer up until somebody else I'm going to talk about later managed to overtake him. He had 22 goals from left back, but under 16 level uh, last season. He only scored his first goal this season, uh, but he's been recognised by the England under 17s. He's going to be playing in the Euros for those next month. Um, he should have been in the nominations for the top three players. Um, this is an absolutely cracking yeah. young player. A lot of heart. Um, loves United. And I think that the ability that this kid's got, he's a destined for the first team. He'll only be 21 at the time. He's a first-year apprentice at the moment. And you know, like I said, he's absolutely killing it. So I think Ethan Laird would be the lad that rounds it out so, at left back. Front. Ironically, so, I think we have actually I, spent five years debating that defence. Uh, we do need so to move I, on and talk well, about well, the rest well, of it. Go, go on, Joshy. Can I just respond? I let this, I don't, it's not that I don't think those are good choices. It's just that I think at the current stage of the squad, you've got Jose Mourinho as manager, and you've got certain areas which are, you know, they're high-priority areas, full-back, centre-back, probably, midfield. So Mourinho's going to go out and sign players, and they're going to be 
hopefully high quality players and they're going to be in the side so talking about a 16 year old now yes he could become brilliant but we're going to hope maybe go out and sign in a years, left back Jesse. If yeah, we sign so, left back, we're going to sign someone 26, 27, 28, ready for now. Yeah, That's what Jose so, does. So in yeah, five years' so he's, time, he's, he's going to be a different gonna, guy. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to be in and around the squad, I think, but not necessarily the starting left back. This is why, like, Tuan Zebe, if we go out and sign a top-class centre-back and hopefully build that, Tuan Zebe will be in and around the squad, similar to some of these youth players that I think you guys are going to put in. They'll be in and around the squad in the same way that Rashford is at the moment. Um... You know, he doesn't start every game. Lingard doesn't start every game. But you, you're projecting having Jose Mourinho as manager. Yeah, you're yeah. So you got Jose. Yeah, he's going to sign. Team. He's going to sign those guys and for a lot of money, and they're going to be quality players. And as he transitions out, the other players will start to transition in. That's what I'm saying. Both making very good points. We can sit here debating defenders all day, but we do need to get through the rest of the team and the more exciting positions. Uh, if you're not watching this live, you might get an ad break now. If you are, you're going to completely miss it. But either way, see you in a sec. And we're back. It's uh, the full-time Devils debate today. We're debating what Manchester United's team is going to look like in the year 2023. So in five years' time. Yeah, five years' time. Uh, right, let's talk about the midfield. There's one name I hope that none of you are going to say is going to be is going to have left the club in five years. However, I think we all know it is very, very possible. Halson is Pogba in your Manchester United midfield in five years' time. Yes, and that's not to say he stayed here for them five years because I think he could have gone and come back again. <laughs> we've already seen that, we? So my midfield, I'm going for a midfield three, and I've gone for Fabinho number six because Jardim is my manager. So Jardim is a, a big fan of Fabinho. He is the linchpin of his side. Fabinho is my energetic number six that's going to uh, allow this team to play football. And we're going to play some very fast, very direct football with Fabinho as my number six. And I'm going for Angel Gomez and Paul Pogba as a pair of number eights that are going to absolutely Ooh. tear teams to pieces. Angel Gomez, 22 years of age. Paul Pogba in his peak, 29 years of age, wearing a captain's armband. Bring it up. I feel like as someone who has played uh, career mode and gone more than six years into the future, I can tell you that is going to be tasty. Uh, Joshy, <laughs> who's in your midfield, mate? Is Angel Gomez getting in there too? So, again, this goes back to what I was saying before. Jose is going to go out and sign two central midfielders this, this summer and you're hoping that they're going to be top quality because he needs them now. But it doesn't mean they're going to be old. You know, It doesn't mean they're going to be at that end of the spectrum because you can't have your squad like that. So I think he's going to go out and sign two central midfielders. Again, you're going to need that someone to complement the three because I've got in a three and um, someone that long-term sort of successor to that Matic role. I've said Fred in that sort of role and then ahead of them, ahead of him, Pogba. I think he'll stay. I think he'll get over this sort of thing and start to um, really cement his place in the, in the squad long-term. And I've said uh, Milinkovic Savic. I mean, these are just names that have been linked. But the idea is there's two central midfielders that are going to play alongside Pogba and, it, and again, form that axis. It's an area where we need reinforcements. Matic is not going to be around in five years. Herrera is not going to be a first team, first team regular, like a first choice. Even now, he's not. So I think he's going to bring two in and that's going to form that core of that midfield. But again, like, uh, like I said earlier, you'll have players like Angel Gomez, um, Andreas Pereira potentially sort of floating in and around that squad uh, and and you know coming in in and out of the side because it, it's a squad game you know it's not a, it's a, whilst we're talking about first 11s they're not going to play every single match Paul who's getting in your midfield in a future Manchester United I need a judgment call here Gaz I need I need I need some um, some advice and guidance at this point because these boys have gone with 4-3-3 as if the football formations of today are going to exist in the far-flung future of 2023. We'll have had a full World Cup cycle. Everyone's, everyone's going to be on hoverboards. Exactly. There'll be some tactical innovations and I've gone with a sort of 4-2-4, 4-4-2 hybrid. And okay. what I'd like to know is, do you want my attacking midfielders here or shall I put them with the attackers or do you want the attacking midfielders with the midfielders. We'll, we'll have them now. We'll have them now. Okay. Who was your attacking okay. midfielders now? All right. So uh, in at the base of the solid, like midfield means midfield midfielders, um, I've gone with Timothy Fosumenta, who that I think is where his positional growth will occur. Five years of developing positional awareness will make a big difference. He's obviously had an amazing football education, so I think there'll be no problem with him getting what he needs to get about that role. And my other pick there is Eric Dyer, but that's whatever 
mid level, well, like whatever mid twenties holding midfielder we sign this summer, that's what Eric Dyer represents. We were in for him last season. I think there's every chance he leaves Spurs in the summer. I think at some point in the next five years, this Spurs, the current Spurs squad, will be dissipated to the winds, and it's just about whether Mourinho's managing United when that happens because he clearly likes Dyer. Attacking midfielders, uh, the hope and the dream of Angel, Angel Gomez. I've got him on the left here, but this is this is future football, man. The positions aren't like they're they're going to be fluid. Do you know what I mean? They're going to be moving in and out styles, bro. Um, and then uh, on the right wing, I've gone for Jesse Lingard. The idea that Paul Pogba is still at United in five years' time seems like absolute fiction to me. Uh, he's a Mino Raiola client. Not for long. His- uh, in, uh, oh really? Is it going to be? He's going to be leaving Mino. Well, if he leaves Mino, then you know. He's going with Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe that changes things. But uh, I think at some point in about two or three years, someone's going to whisper to Paul Pogba, "Do you know how much money and how many trophies you could get if you moved now?" Um, I, I think he's in the De- in exactly the De Gea camp. And and I've picked both of them to leave because I don't think the next five years of United are going to be phenomenally successful. If the most positive man in the world is saying stuff like that, we might as well just <laughs> sell our season tickets, to be honest. Uh, right, you mentioned then you've got a, you've got the weird formation going on. Do you want to talk to us about the forwards then, Paul? Yeah, I mean, this is the, the forwards kind of blend into the Gomez Lingard, and then a, but I've got Rashford and Lukaku as a front two because I oh, don't yes. see I don't see any. First of all, I think that. If 442 does come back, which I genuinely believe is entirely possible because of the cyclical nature of football. 442 well, is already back. Well, exactly, exactly. 442 is is nudging through in the way that 4231 was in the kind of lead up to the 2010 World Cup. And 4231 absolutely took over. I think we might see after this World Cup, 442 start to really take over. And Lukaku and Rashford is an absolutely insane front two. Like the 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 way first of all they gel really well on the pitch. We've already seen that in one season. I think Lukaku, there's no reason we aren't his forever home. Do you know what I mean? And obviously we're Marcus Rashford's forever home, because how could we not be? So yeah, but I think Lingard goes uh, Lukaku and Rashford, all players who are currently at the club in in attacking capacities. I think that makes sense given how much we've invested in the forwards in the last few years. Joshy, talk to me about forwards, mate. So look, this is um, so I'm not. I haven't got on the graphic. It will be a traditional four three three, right? But actually, this is going to be a bit more fluid because of the players that we're going to have coming through from the academy. So it's going to be. I've gone with I think Rashford. Um, left on the left working off that left side Um, Lukaku I think like Paul said I think he's going to be here he's he's going to be here the whole time he's going to score goals and I think we are going to go out and sign um, a right we need a right sided player that to just sort of that not not an out and out winger but we need someone who can play on that right hand side and also someone who will be a bit of a marquee signing because that's what Ed Woodward does as well. I'm not saying it's happening this summer, but someone like uh, a young guy is going to come up and break through. And I've gone with uh, Pulisic uh, from Dortmund because I think he's he's a, f- um, a phenomenal talent. He could he's going to break through, I think, into that sort of top tier of player because obviously by then Messi and Ronaldo won't have their own tier. And um, and he's from the US. That's another commercial uh, interest there. So I think that that's the three that you'll see on the screen. But the idea is actually you could put that in a with Pulisic behind with Rashford, Lukaku up top. We've had this formation discussion previously, and then you've got the likes of Angel Gomez who could come into that type of role behind the strikers. Um, potentially, if Mason Greenwood can um, develop, he can play across that and up top. Um, we talk, we've got Tahith Chong as well who can play across that in the wide positions. And I think like we're seeing now, you've got. Okay, we've got Sanchez who pretty much holds that berth. But, you know, if you think about the way in which Mata comes in and out of the side, that might be the same sort of role Lingard plays or uh, Andreas Pereira plays. You know, he comes in and out of the side, but he, he sort of glues things together. And then you've got Angel Gomez coming in, doing what Rashford is doing now. Because, yes, he'll be 22 and he's supremely talented, but it will just depend on what's ahead of him. And what's ahead of him at the moment is fairly intimidating in terms of Rashford, Lukaku, uh, Marshall, who I think none of us have mentioned, but you all <laughs> feel like he's going to be leaving. But at the he's moment, there's gone. that blockage. Yeah, so you know, you've got all of these players in and around the squad, but then you've got that 
as your almost like your front first choice front three and then the that's why the the fullbacks are picked are excellent going forward so we talked about ryan sessegnon becoming a winger in the future and i think you're probably right but in my my mind with this team he, him and Pereira provide that width up and down that uh, up and down the wings as wing backs and you've got a fairly narrow ish um three so you've got the fr- you could play with a front two so yeah it's not a traditional straight up 4-3-3 so you know uh, but I think we we've, there's loads of potential there, certainly coming through the academy as well. It's good, though. I like it. I like this debate as well. There's no wrong answers. No one knows what it's going to be like in five years' time. Uh, Halson, who would you have up front in the year 2023 for Man United? Uh, I'm glad Joshy mentioned um, Mason Greenwood, because Mason Greenwood is the lad who should have won the under-18s player of the year this year, um, more than a goal a game recently. Uh, he's still an under-16. He's, um, he's quite a slight lad, but he's tall and... He's going to grow into a massive frame. If you've seen like his uh, his uncles and stuff, his uncles are absolute units. And uh, you know that lad's going to grow into the same sort of frame. He's a goal machine. At the moment, he's played on the left, he's played on the right, he's played as a 10. Recently, he's been playing as a number nine. And you absolutely see that killer instinct that he's got. He's going to be played down the middle and he's going to become a real number nine. He's a proper Robin Van Persie finishing um, sort of thing about him. He just finds a way every single time. He will be in and around the squad and he'll be 20 at that time. Um, and you know this is five years away, and he's only going to be twenty at the start of the season. Um, he won't be starting though. I think um, he, he could well be starting. I think you might. There's a very slim outside chance that Jose might give him his debut this year, but I think you'll know who he is in five years' time without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Big Rom is going to be the number nine. Big Rom, Rom is going to be uh, herring down Wayne Rooney's goal record by then. He's going to be hitting 35, 40 goals a season <laughs> over these next few years. And he's going to be proper knocking on the door. I reckon he's going to be in and around the region of 200 goals by then. So uh, watch out for that one. Big Rom's leading the line. Marcus Rashford will have played around 400 matches for Manchester United by then, becoming a proper legend of the club. 24 years of age, Marcus Rashford will be then. He's chasing down Ryan Giggs' record of appearances. Um, and I eat plays <laughs> on the left. And I think Marcus Rashford's going to have adapted his game to play on the left. His crossing's very good. He's going to develop his left foot so he can get round the back as well as chopping on the inside, as well as scoring goals for himself and creating for others. His free kicks are going to be what kids are doing all over playgrounds, all over the UK. And on the left-hand side, we'll bring in a little bit of Jamaican flavour to go with everything else that we've got going on in this team. And that is Leon Bailey. And Leon Bailey is going to be providing goals, he's going to be providing assists, and he's going to complement the rest of this very attacking, very fresh forward three that's going to allow Manchester United to dominate with the unbelievable midfielder Fabinho, Angel Gomez and Paul Pogba and <laughs> Yadim as manager. Manchester United treble coming in 2023. Don't oh worry about dear. It. Do it first. Oh, if, you, if YouTube's still around in five years, we have absolutely no idea what it's going to be like in five years. Pogba might not be here. Jose probably won't be here. World War 3 may have happened and we might all be dead. But this debate has been fun guys, so let's wrap it up with a little 30 seconds each to convince me why you're team is the best i don't even want to say most realistic just try and tell me why it's the best paul shall we start with you mate yeah um like Go. i said earlier my team is designed to be representational um you'll notice there's no real marquee signings in my team signed between now and then because i think we might have seen uh, not the end of the marquee signing era but the sort of peak of the marquee signing era and we might be looking to build something more sustainable sustainability is why my team is the best it's about putting a spine of homegrown players together and adding talent and spice to it perfect for 28 seconds absolutely brilliant uh right i like what you said then paul how soon do you want to get 30 seconds convince me why your team's the best mate go my team's the best because I've got the best goalkeeper in the world between the sticks. I've got one of the best centre-halves in the world in defence. The rest of them are pretty much homegrown or top talent emerging in the world. The midfield, Fabinho, is going to be the linchpin and he's going to be the manager's voice in the dressing room because the manager that I'm bringing in is bringing an experience of winning titles and getting very far in the Champions League, unlike Nicky Butt, who hasn't got a pissing clue what he's doing. And then the attack <laughs> is Leon Bailey, Lukaku and the homegrown Wivenshaw. Manchester is red like Rashford. Marcus Rashford. This is the team that's going to take it. This is the more realistic team because nice. Nicky Butt is probably going to be the assistant manager to Ryan Giggs okay. somewhere in the future that manages his own teams. <laughs> Joshy, 30 Might seconds. A more realistic manager, but not a more realistic, realistic team. Back up, Nicky. <laughs> Go on, talk to me. 
So look, mine's the best because look, it takes into account that we're going to go out and spend a ton of money this this summer. We have to because Jose wants to win that league next season. And then from there, it doesn't mean he's going to leave at the end of next season. I think he'll still be around. And as we transition to the new uh, into the new uh, into the new manager, you'll start to see some of these exciting young players coming through. And we will make marquee signings because that's what um, Ed Woodward is all about. And the commercial side of things is important. But when you look at the team, it's solid, it's fast, Perfect. it's direct, and it's got quality up top. You know what? I like all your shots. Go on, go on. Watch, 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 one last word, Paul. I just Which decided... Money, Mickey, but, so it's garbage! I just decided to sack if I could get my, Michael Carrick in. You convinced me, Gaz. Well, now <laughs> you've said that, Paul, I was going to say, on the basis of blind optimism... But Nicky Butt was representative. Yeah, I know. I've decided that Michael Carrick's more representative. I think Paul... I think Paul... If Paul's changing his shout to Michael Carrick, I would have given it to Paul. However, earlier on you said Nicky Butt... So it's going to have to go to house. And uh, guys, thank you very much for watching the debate today. We do these every week. They're all really fun. Uh, thank you very much for the guys for joining me. Dot Josh is here. I'd say follow him on Twitter, but you know, uh, he does have a second <laughs> account. He does have a second account. Go and follow that. Uh, Paul Rankcast is here as well. And Housen, of course. Um, we've got a podcast coming on Thursday evening. That's on XS Manchester and live on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, the fan cam's coming this weekend for the big game against Arsenal. I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Guys, thank you very much uh, for joining us today and we'll be back soon. Laters. Cheers, lads. Nice one.